Auckland International Airport, 9 a.m., November 13. A yellow Boeing 707 freighter lumbers to a parking space on the tarmac. About the same time the plane lands, in a stadium not 10 miles from the airport, men race the clock to build a giant outdoor stage. The yellow plane's been chartered for five weeks by English rock band Deep Purple, cost a quarter of a million dollars. Music is, uh, is going a strange way at the moment, English groups. It's, it's either one thing or another. We'd like to collect hundreds of different musical uh, ideas into our, our act, blending it into the, into the number to get more interest musically. I understand that uh, you all moved into a house together, kind of uh, so you could live together and work together, but it didn't work out. What? Uh... I was haunted. The house was haunted? <laughs> yeah, sure. Now you really. And you really, really believe it was haunted? I know it was haunted. I, I saw it with my own glasses. Listen, hush, hush. I thought I heard a call in my name. Now hush, hush. She broke my heart, but I love just the same. Now hush, hush. happened in the Royal Albert Hall, the world premiere of a new musical event. These scenes of unrestrained enthusiasm took place in London, and for the thousands of people who packed the Royal Albert Hall that night, it was a unique occasion, one which brought together two worlds of music, symphony 
and pop. Dave, I think it's a bit too rowdy for me. It's more your kind of thing than mine. You seem to need pop music like a drug. This is the border of Devon and Cornwall, about six hours' drive from London. It's the middle of winter, so there's not a tourist to be seen, and the beaches and hills look deserted. But for the last fortnight, these hills have been shaken by the sound of one of England's top groups, Deep Purple. Von Fireball die Nummer No, No, No. Ihr hört die Purple mit Fireball. Und jetzt kommen die Purple auch live ins Studio. Mit wenn das so weitergeht. Ohne Polizei und so ein Zeugs könnten die Karten weniger sein. Fünf bis sechs Mark statt zehn. Ich wünschte, ihr hört auf mit dem Krach. Denn er ist nicht fair gegenüber denjenigen, die zahlen und auch nicht fair gegen uns. It's not nice for the people who do pay their money and it's not nice for us. Switzerland recording the Machine Head album and this song here tells the story of most of the things that happened while we were out there particularly the burning down of the casino the night we were there watching the show and all the other affiliated hassles that we had over the period of time that we were there smoke on the walls of this one yeah. we were trying to make a record uh, without using a studio. That, that was the basic reason we were there. We wanted to make um, a recording in a, in a live venue, basically for the sound. And the casino in Montreux, in Switzerland, if you were doing a tour of Europe, you'd play there. And the guy who was organizing it, Claude Nobbs, said, uh, don't put your gear in yet, because there's one more show to go before you can do it. It's a matinee tomorrow afternoon, friends happen, and mothers, three o'clock, do you want to go? Sure. And about an hour into the show, um, someone fired a flare gun into the ceiling, which is made of it was like a false ceiling bamboo. Literally within five minutes or so, the place was an inferno.
took hours. In fact, it burned all the afternoon, all the evening, and the next morning we went there, it was still smoldering. You know, it was a huge fire. And it's amazing that no one got hurt. The, uh, the Japanese company said, we want to make a live album. And live albums in those days weren't the thing to do. You know, they were kind of, they had a budget kind of feel about them. So they, they insisted that they wanted to do it. And we said, okay, we'll do it on certain conditions. But A, our engineer goes over to record it. Uh, that B, we bring the stuff back, we mix it. And if we don't like it, you don't put it out. And C, it only comes out in Japan. And we recorded three concerts two in Osaka and one in Tokyo. And most of the material from Made in Japan comes from the second night in Osaka. Because the first night, we were on stage like four puppets, you know, we're being recorded. But by the second night, we'd kind of relaxed to it. done about as much as we could do with that kind of rock, as far as I could see. My idea was that there was far too much talent in the band for it to remain static. I thought we were compromising ourselves. I thought we were, we were losing our integrity musically. And um, I thought it was important that we change slightly our attitude to what we were doing. Um, I'm still very proud of the music we made. But if I look at the albums that we made, I can see a formula to a certain extent. The first track on an album would always be a fast rock and roll number. And then it would go through, I mean, I was very pleased with the music, it was good. And I was not in any way ashamed of it, but uh, I felt there was a time to add a new dimension to it, or to adopt a slightly different approach without losing our identity, but just naturally progressing. Otherwise we would have faded away. And this is why I'd, and, Nobody really wanted to do that, so this is why we left. The year before Ian left, we did six American tours. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and when Ian did quit, I really thought that was the end of it. And then uh, one of our managers, John Coletta, showed me a copy of Billboard. We had 11 different entries, singles, albums, back albums. It was exploding. And that year, 1973, we were the top album-selling artists in the United States. And he said, you can't stop now. So well, we just did. <laughs> we lost our singer and our bass player. I mean, you know, how much more final can that get? He said, replace them. All I want to say to all of you is thank you very much. You've been great. Thank you for everything you've given us in Japan. Uh, this is the last night. The end. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Good night. Good evening and welcome to In Concert. Right now we're watching English Rock Group Deep Purple arrive by private airplane to perform at the California Jam. On April 6th, 200,000 nice people assembled at the Ontario Motor Speedway in Southern California to enjoy each other and the music of eight fine rock bands. Tonight, In Concert is proud to focus on the stars of the show. Deep purple. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as In Concert takes you to California Jam. Are you all smiling? You look fucking great from here. Really good. Good evening, really nice to be here. I want to just say a couple of words with you before we carry on. Right. You know me, you know Richie, you know Ian Pace, because two people you don't know. I'd like you to welcome them to California. The guy used to be with Trapeze, bass and vocals, Glenn Hughes. Let's hear it for him. There you go, that's nice. And the guy who's never been to California before, loving every minute of it, 
Make him welcome, David Coverdale. You have a reputation for being the uh, loudest band in the world. Are you happy with this? No. <laughs> with it. It's wrong. Wherever so There's so many other bands that play loud all the time, whereas we use a lot of light and shade in the music. When it's quiet, it's quiet. When it's loud, it's loud. We certainly would like to be, we like to think ourselves as a vaguely aggressive band. I mean, we're not that interested in being anything else. In terms of... <laughs> say that um, your entrance to the band along with David's has created a younger image and a younger trend and is sort of starting to change the direction of Deep Purple, for which everybody's happy. How do you feel about that? I, I, can't, I can't disagree. Um, I just get off on the uh, plane in the band, you know, we just get off musically, we don't put out this, uh, this little, little teeny bob room, as, you, as you'll see, but we do create a lot of energy on stage. Yes, of course it's changing direction because of the new, new ideas that, that are in the band. Let's just say at the moment we're halfway around the bend in, in the change of direction. Uh, I just felt that the band was becoming too bluesy. Not bluesy, but kind of funky. And I don't like funky soul music. I like blues, I like classical music, hard rock, medieval rock, but I don't like that funky blues. And that's what I said. I'm more. Thank you! A song for everybody, this is a song called You Keep On Moving. Deep Purple's had quite a few changes. Today's lineup: John Lord, Ian Pace, Tommy Bolin, Glenn Hughes, and David Coverdale. We've been really lucky with, with this. Um, set of five people and that it's come together in a matter of a few months as opposed to like nearly a year for the old bands. Uh, so we're all very happy and very confident and very proud of the album we've got. When, when Richie Blackmore left, was it a shock or had you known it was coming? Yeah. Well, we knew it was coming, but it was a shock when he told us. It was like mid-tour, you know. Um, and we'd planned uh, another album at the end of that tour, which was in Europe. And everybody was all like getting into the whole thing and getting quite excited about it the way things were going, then bang, out of, out of nowhere, it came, uh, I'm off. How's an American shaking up into what's basically you know, an English sort of band? It's, uh, I didn't think, it, I, I, to be honest, at first I didn't think it would, it would be, it would work, I, I really didn't, but um, we had a jam, I and mean, within the first minute or two, you know, I could tell that they were into the same things I was into, kind of an R&B, funk kind of, uh, and, and they, I think they were hunting for uh, freedom, which, which I don't think Richie gave them, you know? So like they were so open to the whole thing, it, it turned out lovely, otherwise I wouldn't be. Pace and I had, had both decided we'd had enough. We came off stage one night, uh, I think it was the Liverpool Empire we were playing, and they just looked at each other and said, I'm, I'm, you know, I can't do it anymore. That was in 1976, March of 76. 